everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Today's video is going to be a tag and I was tagged by Minimalist by Anne. Minimalism by Anne, I guess that's how she says it. And it's a 10 question tag. And you know, I'm gonna, it's gonna be all, my answers will go back to my childhood because as an adult, I don't have anything to say for this other than the first question is if I could have one of these two things and for the entire summer and couldn't have the other, which one would I want? Would it be a sandy beach or a juicy peach? Well, I prefer the juicy peach. Do you prefer cold lemonade or cold tea as a summer drink? Well, I, with me, I'd like the I'd like the cold tea, but it's got to have sugar in it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't want it. I haven't drank tea since I've been on keto because I'd have to put sugar in it, and I don't want to put sugar in it. Same so. thing with the lemonade. Lemonade, I'd have to have sugar in that. The only tea that I've been able to drink, if I were to drink tea, would be sun tea because when you make sun tea, sun tea does not taste bitter. It's got actually a Swedish sweet taste, but it's um, I make it on the weaker side, so then it's like drinking better water instead of water. Okay, do you pref let's see favorite summer tradition? Well, you know the only traditions I remember are when I was a child, and I really didn't have summer traditions. I just had things that I well, there was sort of a tradition, sort of. We used to do it every, um, at the end of the summer, we used to have a, after you, well, was it at the end of the summer? Yeah, the corn would have to have been, corn is, comes like in the end of July, August. Yeah. July and August, Sometime end of July, then. August. We used to take all the berry briars from the, when they, got, when the boys would, I never had to trim the berries, but when the boys trimmed the berries, they would take all the berry briars and they would be in this huge, huge pile. And then when corn season came along, we used to soak the corn in the husk. And we used to build a huge fire down the field, down in the big berry field is what it was. We used to call it down the field. And um, the corn would be put into that fire or on the edge of the fire. And we used to roast the corn. And my cousins used to come and we used to have roasted corn. So that would be, I guess, a childhood summer tradition. We did this probably every year for a long time because we had the berries for a long time. Uh, favorite summer memory? Well, I guess it would be that too, the corn. I don't have any real memories of summer. We worked in the summer. <laughs> I didn't. I remember my cousin, not my cousin, my friend Cheryl and Nancy and Vern and Verna, Mr. Mr. Pucci's Children, grandchildren and daughter used to come and visit. They lived in Florida, or no, they lived in Jamestown at the time, and they would come to visit every summer, and they'd spend the whole summer with the grandpa and the, the Mr. Pucci and Mrs. Pulsey. No, you tell me. <laughs> they said their name. One said it the Italian way, and one said it the I think the American way. But anyways, they used to spend the whole summer with them, and they were our playmates because we lived in a neighborhood that had no kids. There was just Frank. And Janice never played. And then there was Mark across the street for a while. And um, Martha. Those are my playmates. But when you when you live where I lived, the neighbors were always working too. They were all busy. We all had farms and so we were all doing farm work. So What they now call homesteading. I know. But we called it a farm. Even though it was just a small operate. It was not the big, we didn't have the big sprinklers and the big huge tractors. We had the horse hole that you walked behind and I drove the tractor and the tractor had two clutches and I used to use the outside clutch. Brakes. Or brakes, I mean, yeah, one, two brakes. One clutch, two brakes. Yeah. Um, I used to use the outside brake because when we were, when my dad was horse hoeing, if the tractor felt like it was Sliding used to do the brake and it used to shift it, give it a little jerk, and it would be going straight then. And so I did that. Okay, um, favorite summer activity probably was going down the creek. 
we loved going down the creek and I used to go down the creek when we were picking berries I used to say to my mom I don't want to pick berries anymore can I go down the creek and so we used to go down the creek and we used to wash these great big huge rocks that looked like turtlebacks they were huge and we would collect or we'd also catch grasshoppers on the brown dirt there was a different type of grasshopper I haven't seen those grasshoppers we see the green ones now, but these were these were like they blend blend with the dirt. They were kind of brownish, and we used to pick a berry leaf and hold the grasshopper and feed the leaf, and it used to chomp, 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 chomp the leaf. It was kind of fun. Those that's what I used to do. That was fun activity, and we'd play kick the can, and we'd play um, two, three grounders and a fly in the road. Of course, we always played in the road. That was the best place because that was. A nice open area that was stone and it was tar and stoned road so it was sort of like a paved road but not really a paved road and I remember also when I was um, this is still I guess on memories um, when the throughway was built I was just a little girl on the tricycle and I remember my brothers bringing my tricycle down into the throughway before the throughway was opened up and we used to ride our bikes down there because it was that was Smooth pavement. They had, you know, how the throughway roads are. They're, they were brand new and smooth. So those were memories. Uh, my summer activity. We didn't have any activities. We just played down the creek and rode our bikes. And worked. And worked. And played ball on the road. Uh, three grounders and a fly. I don't know if you know what that is. That's where you you throw the ball up yourself because there's not enough of us to throw the ball to you. You'd throw the ball up, and with the bat, you'd hit it. And if it was a fly and somebody caught it, then they were up next. Or if a grounder would be one that rolled, and whoever got that, you had to get three of those to be the next batter. And that's how you play that game. Um, my favorite summer comfort food? Hmm. I didn't have any. Truly. We... We, I remember one I didn't like. <laughs> I, we, my dad used to like to eat kidney beans with poached eggs. And he used to dip his bread in the juice of the kidney beans and eat his poached eggs. I used to hate that. Oh, I used to hate poached eggs. And I, uh, kidney beans I liked. I didn't mind dipping my bread in it. But I really didn't like poached eggs. Um... Favorite thing about the summer? Hmm, I think it was because we didn't have to go to school and um, Nancy and Cheryl would be coming and we'd get to play with them. And you know, I don't know if you know it, but when they where they lived, the fashion was always ahead of ours. And we lived not that far away, truly. But they always seemed like their fashion came to us later. Then when she moved to Florida, it was way ahead of us we would see what the new fashion was going to be when she would come for the summer and then the next summer that would be our fashion at our uh, for us if you could do anything all summer what would it be <laughs> i don't know if i could do something all, i'm doing it now <laughs> i'm just doing nothing <laughs> do whatever i feel like and would you rather have homemade ice cream or a fancy tropical drink possibly in a pineapple shell. I'd like the ice cream. I'm not big on drinks of any kind. I prefer the, I would prefer the ice cream, but it better be butter pecan, because that's the kind of like, if I have to have, because I like the nuts in it. When I was, when the kids were younger, they used to all get ice cream cones, and I, I wouldn't get one, because I really didn't care for ice cream, but I did like the cone, and the kids never liked their cone, so I used to eat the cone, and they used to eat the ice cream. Um, if I could have a summer long vacation and go to any state and um, I could take anybody I wanted to um, and stay there and I would be paid the whole time if I had a job, where would I want to go? I don't know. I'd probably just stay home because who's going to take care of my chickens <laughs> the whole summer? Nobody would want to. I don't think there's any place I'd want to be. And I, to eat at fine restaurants, I could eat at fine restaurants too in this little trip that I would take. I could order if they deliver, but they don't deliver way out here either. That's another downside of where I live. 
we could wish for stuff, but you're not going to get it. So I guess I'll just stay home, take care of my chickens, <laughs> eat my eggs, and um, that would be what I will do. Okay, now that's, I will put these questions, and I kind of skimmed over them pretty good, pretty fast, pretty not. I don't think summer summer to me was always work I had I I didn't really I and play down the creek and we used to take our bath in the creek a lot of people would take their bath in the bathtub well we didn't have a bathroom at the time until I was much older and so we used to go down the creek and take a bath and if otherwise you did bath in the wash tub in the basement so the creek was more fun um, so I guess summer, that's what my mem summer memories are, is just basically working and riding my bike and playing down the creek and hollering to the neighbor boy, Hey, Marky, can you come over? <laughs> I'd say, come on. And he'd go, you yeah, can't. You come over. And so we'd be yelling back and forth at the corner of our, of our yards because we lived far enough away where you had to yell. Okay, that's that. You can have this. And yesterday I mentioned... The, the book that I mentioned was Borgheta and the Coyote. I thought I'd show you what it looks like. It's about the little lamb, Borgheta and the Coyote. I want to read just one little part to you. The one that, the part where, when I was reading the one comment and it brought to mind about the chewing. Um, And the, this is where, finally, finally, if you get the book, you're going to love it. You're, even though you read it a thousand times, you're still going to love it. And um, this is where Borgheta and the Coyote and if are. if you have kids, they're going to They're really going to really love it. I used to take this to McDonald's and read it to the kids there, too. Okay, this is where the uh, little lamb and the coyote is finally going to eat him. Because he keeps saying in the whole book he's going to eat little Borgheta. And Borgheta... Borgheta blats. Oh, Senor Coyote, I know I deserve to die, but grant me one kindness. Swallow me whole so that I won't have to suffer the biting and the chewing. Oh, why should I make you comfortable while I eat you? demanded the coyote. Anyway, I couldn't swallow you whole all in one piece, even if I wanted to. Oh, yes, you could, said Borikita. Your mouth is so big, you could swallow a cougar. Open it, open it wide, and I will run and dive right in. That's all I'll read to you. <laughs> it's such a good story, though. I just love it. And I like the way Borikita constantly is tricking the coyote, and the coyote falls for it every time. <laughs> even, even at the very end, he falls for the darn trick. I, Who, who's the who's, who's the, the author? author? It was written. So if they want to try to find okay, it. Okay, this is a this was a scholastic book. I had gotten it when I had the daycare. I actually had um, the book program where the kids could order books and I could order books. And this came. This one is written by Verna Ardema, A A R D E M A Ardema, and illustrated by Peter Peter. M Pete, Mathers. Boy, they got weird names. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody easy to say. But it was really, it's a really cute story. And if you make the, the different, the kids used to like the different sounds, like Borgita and the Coyote. Okay. And I also wanted to show you, I finished my shawl. And I told you I was going to add more to the bottom. See, it's it was blue. And I added the gray because... The blue, if I would have had more of the blue, I would have added the blue, but because they didn't have it, they had gray. They had only one skein of each, and it's really big. It's really big. See how big? It is big. It's big. I made it nice and long, and so, and today is actually cold, so this feels good. Um, <laughs> Jim well, says it's not cold. <laughs> when you say cold, specify your it's temperature. It's probably, I don't know, maybe 76 degrees. <laughs> I think it was like, more like uh, I don't know. 80 No, today. I don't think it made it to 80. It's too cold. I wore a sweater most of the day. <laughs> and except for when I was crocheting. I had this on me and it felt real good. And I had I was in the room that had no draft. My mealworms are in that room, which I have to show you my mealworms again. I've got lots of them now. Um, 
lot more than what I had. Those beetles did a good job. I have to, I have to sh shift them. I think some of them are going to the pupae stage already, so they're already transitioning again. So they're doing great. Um, was that everything I wanted to say today? I think so. I think so. I think so. Well, I hope you all have a great day the rest of the weekend, and I hope you enjoyed this tag and this um, Borgita and the Coyote and my shawl. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.